Gora Mitsuha is a Shinto Ryu Kami, and the last two Revan Kami born from the blood of Kagatsuchi after he was slain by Izanagi's sword. The reason why Izanagi killed Kagatsuchi is very, was very simple. Ether Gazer aside, because Ether Gazer is just naming every modifiers with, you know, deities from the past, Izanami died giving birth to Kagetsuchi. Izanami is actually Izanagi's wife, if I'm not mistaken. Izanagi never felt better or never got over from the sorrow and the anger of Kagetsuchi. He really blamed Kagetsuchi for the rest of his life, you know, he never got over it. So Izanagi decided to kill his child by his neck using his sword known as Amano Ohabari, if I got it wrong, please let me know. So Kagatsuchi died by the hands of his father, and many gods were born from the corpse of Kagatsuchi. However, the blood that had collected in, on the hilt of the sword of Izanagi leaked out and gave birth to two gods that is known as Kura Okami and Kura Mitsuha. Kura means darkness and Mitsuha means the beginning of water. Well, whatever it is, these are the swords I'm able to find. Wikipedia Japanese even confirmed that there weren't a lot of swords regarding Kura Mitsuha, there's no urban legend or whatsoever. Basically, she is a drag water dragon, pretty much just like Gang Chang in some way, but except in Shinto belief. And that's pretty much all the source I could gather. There's no urban legend of it. There, there were some rumors saying that there are shrines about Kiro Kura Mitsuha in Japan, but I couldn't find that source as well. So I don't want to touch so much about it, except a little bit of lore for you guys. Now, in the world of Gaia, our Mitsuha is known as the popular weirdo hero, though feared by many most people, but she's actually pretty popular among the kids. She worked as a ranger in Sasanami, providing justice and peace. Despite being an ice user, Mitsuha is actually really afraid of cold and really has a bad sense of mission. Even as a modifier or awakened as a modifier, Mitsuha didn't really like fighting off evil Wispane, but rather she's really in love with the beauty of humanity which can be difficult considering how cruel and selfish human can be even in our society itself. Mitsuha is close to one person and one person only, and this person can always tell if Mitsuha is telling lies. And eventually we'll find out more about this person in the story, and she is known as Akika Himiko, Mitsuha's very first friend and her best friend. Let's talk about Mitsuha's kid. Now, being in a Shino faction, Ice Element, Melee Attacker, and a Rage type character, Mitsuha wields an access key weapon known as Soei, a Naginata, a Japanese pole arm blade weapon, which is very close to, you know, uh, the Chinese pole arm that Guan Yu use. Mitsuha is a swifty character, if I have to say so myself. Her gameplay are overall very fun, despite her damage being really, uh, a lot more lower than Izanami, and a full buffed out Ascari. So I find that her role to be much more suitable as a buffer, also a debuffer, but you can also play her as a DPS, but in this video, I will only focus on building Mitsuha as a debuffer. Mitsuha basic attack. Mitsuha swings the Naginata dealing for 5 combo dealing a total of 885% ice damage. Every hit will generate rage. A full combo of 5 hit will gain a total of 33 rage. You notice that every time Mitsuha glows with each attack, this is important later with skill 3, this condition is called Frost Cloak. Now, skill 3 can be followed up with her basic attack, her skill 1, her skill 2, and even skill 3. Every variation between the combo has its own version of skill 3. I'm not gonna go with the percentage, but basically what skill 3 does in every variation, 1, 2, 3 basic attack, is that it will always provide a debuff, a ice resistant debuff of 10% that lasts for 10 seconds. Mitsuha dodge consists of a zero time slow, but aside that she has a range attack. Starting with at least one basic attack, followed up by a dodge, Mitsuha is able to do a counter fate dash attack while providing a few range attack. I didn't notice this until I realized I was playing around to know that it's actually a range attack, but preferably to do it close range. This will send waves of slash towards enemy dealing some damage, but also generate 10 rage points. Now it's better to do this close rage melee because you'll be getting that 10 rage point as well as some from the basic attack. Mitsuha skill 1 is a 2 hit dash attack forward allowing you to close in with the target or get to their back because it's actually slash true dealing a total of 1871% ice damage. This will also give Mitsuha frost cloak to follow up with skill 3. Skill 3 again like I said will add a 10% ice resistant debuff to enemy for 10 seconds. Uh, skill 2 is definitely one of my favorite about Mitsuha. Mitsuha skill 2 is probably one of my favorite in her kit. Not only it does the most damage, she sprints away from the enemy, dragging her Naginata 
and this will do some AoE damage if enemies are close by. And she moves away and slowly comes back with a leap and throws her Naginata at the enemy, causing an explosion of ice, dealing a total of 2,800.7.6%. Uh, it has a cooldown of 16 seconds, quite long, I know, but regardless, it's because it deals more damage than skill 1. Now, skill 2 is something that you always want to spend because this is the most damage. Skill 2 can also be followed up by skill 3, allowing Mitsuha to cause ice resistance debuff 10% for 10 seconds. Now, if you're wondering if skill 1 or skill 2 follow up with skill 3 deals more damage, it's definitely gonna be skill 2. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna spare you the numbers, okay? Now, skill 3 as a standalone skill can also be used like without following up with 1 and 2, but it only deals a total of 187% damage. It can also follow up with skill 3 to skill 3, total, total of damage of 1403%. Adding debuff as well, 10%, 10 seconds. I mean, 1403% damage is nice, but a consumption of 20 rage for the first one is definitely not worth it. I would recommend always focus on skill 1 or skill 2 unless they are on cooldown. Mitsuha ultimate deals a total damage of 1898%, less by a, a, a thousand from a skill 2. But however, what we're looking at here is that it will provide buff will be casted to the character with the highest attack. Now the keyword here is highest, meaning if you accidentally, like actually my Arctic Abyss Poseidon has actually higher attack than my Izanami, so that buff actually moves to uh, Arctic Abyss Poseidon instead of Izanami. Although Izanami has lower stat, but what's in her kit actually does more damage. So it's kind of sad because all of that damage accidentally go to Arctic Abyss and Poseidon instead of Izanami. So be careful with this. Be careful with your build. You might have to nerf your Saju a little bit if your Arctic Abyss is very strong. This buff that is given to the IC modifier with the highest attack is called a Kongyu State. It grants super armor to the one that has the buff, which means you won't be getting any knockback, reduce damage taken by 30%, and increase critical damage by 35%. And for every 1% of ice attribute damage comes from Mitsuha Frost Shadow, it will increase 1% of cool, uh, critical damage up to 120%. Now this is complicated, don't pay attention, it basically is giving more critical damage to you, the highest attacker, highest ice attacker in the team. Now the Kongyu state lasts for a total of 15 seconds, the skill also adds frost to the enemy. Another buff is that it will increase the charge of ultimate if you or the teammate self-trigger a zero time. This will give you 15% charge. Of your ultimate which uh it's just very important because you always want to be spamming it so from this or uh, all her mitsuha kit we can know that what you need to do with mitsuha is always spam your ultimate when it's available keep those uh, debuff rotation up and that's basically it unless we're talking about eater path so i'm only going to be talking about the red eater code because blue is not uh, blue is kind of unique fun mechanics but it's not really like a very a lot of damage if you want to like do dps yellow is much more of a selfish build towards uh, mitsuha but i'm focusing only on the red because this is the best build and this is the best row i think mitsuha should be doing let's take a look at red one red one allows mitsuha frost which is her skill 3 debuff to stack up to 15. that is definitely insane right it's gonna be a lot more like if you're having 10 15 will be 150 percent ice resistant debuff red 2 skill 3 follow up chain debuff attack will no longer provide ice resistant debuff but instead like skill 1 to skill 3 skill 2 to skill 3 skill 3 to skill 3 will no longer provide ice resistant debuff but every time mitsuha does a dodge attack if it lands a critical hit a 15 percent ice resistance will be dealt to the enemy and this will only last for five seconds but keep in mind it can be stacked up to 15 seconds so you can always keep that up oh just just to make sure you know always do a dodge attack twice maybe to, to ensure there's a crick in that five seconds and ensure that you know your sigil stat make sure to roll for critical rate instead of critical damage because you want to be triggering debuff first before damage red 3 long pressing mitsuha dodge now this is actually my favorite red 3 long pressing mitsuha dodge will trigger an insane cool slash dancing right that requires 45 rage at least it deals total of 1,300% ice damage, buffing the entire team ice damage by 30%, lasting 5 seconds. My only focus is that after you're doing this, make sure to use Izanami and Mitsuha's ultimate. 5 seconds, that's so, that's a very small window. If you want to play her as DPS, like I said again, Yellow Eater Coast is the best, okay? So Mitsuha Fangtor actually gives a number of effects, which is when a team 
Ice attack hit enemy inflict the frost status. Every frost attack increases instantaneous critical rate by an additional of 0.4%. Now the frost can now be stacked up to 15 if you choose the Ether Code grid 1, which is uh, if you do the math, is 6% critical rate will increase for the entire team. Now skill 3 follow up additionally decrease ice resistance by 4%. Now we no longer do that if we use the red ether codes, but if you're still using the yellow, it's still going to help Mitsuha as a main DPS. Now number 3, ether code red 2, dodge skill, critical attack, effect decrease ice resistance by an additional of 10%. I'm not sure if this stacks, but more is better from what we see. And number four, when entering modified mode, clear all enemy CC's resistance point. And when in modified mode, every time enemies are inflicted with CC statuses, clear the CC resistance point generator and additionally deal 500% ice damage. Max three triggers per modified mode. So it's gonna happen a total of 1,500%. Skill three and dodge skill follow up increase cell damage by 6% for every hit. Last six seconds, max attack. Okay max stat 3 stack and last but not least skill 3 base damage is increased by 16% now considering that skill 3 uh doesn't deal a lot of damage i don't think it's recommended i don't think her functor is like a must have but it's definitely nice to have I would say that it would have a 30 to 40 percent improvement um compared to not having it we're gonna talk about sujute build as well as warp so let's go with sujute first this is uh, I actually made videos, but now I'm talking in a freestyle manner because I uh, I noticed that. So to those who want to play the yellow Eater codes, of course, uh, the Spartan Battle Cry is going to increase your skill damage as well as re reduce rage consumption. Uh, this is more of for Mitsuha to be a main DPS or a solo unit. But always remember that debuff actually benefits the entire team, hence why this one uh, actually gives a very great debuff. Of course, with this one, uh, this is the new Sajute that you'll be able to farm during the event, but keep in mind that it'll be uh, you'll be farmable in the future in future event or you'll be added in permanent post Sajute farming. Now, this is much more recommended for the support build if you again if you want to play uh, DPS solo unit, but Spartan Battlecry is definitely okay. Of course, I don't really build my Mitsuha because I don't really buy the BP in this game, but I would emphasize on focusing on critical rate, considering that uh doing crit is so important in keeping her debuff up otherwise it's always 888 if you're new to this game always go 8 this 8 this 8 this and then ice damage or skill damage and everything else is actually fine the warp systems i apologize i couldn't max it out but 6 and 5 is going to be the same it's always melee damage it's always dps in this game and considering that you're using the rate eater codes definitely going with this one over here not, not sure the english name and then uh actually there are various ways of how you want to play it, but I will always maximize DPS in this game. That's just my personal preference. Now, this is definitely the best team that we can offer for Mitsuha. Now, the main damage dealer is going to be Izanami as well as Skadi. Now, Skadi is going to be so powerful because of her Synchro buff. If you actually max her out, if you actually have her Funk I can actually double as her and I actually have her Funk and this is going to be... She's going to be almost on par with Izanabi but slightly lower but keep in mind that you know again uh the con conceal state which is Mitsuha buffing the highest attacker can either go to whoever that is higher so I honestly think that um be careful with building that if you can't get um uh, Skadi and you only have two of this it's actually great but remember that F2P can actually build a decent Arctic Abyss Poseidon where is she yeah there she is there she is so you can actually build it like this if not, any other ice team would be nice. Now, if you don't, if you wanna just focus on buffing Izanami, of course, Hera is definitely great. Unless we're talking about, you know, universal buff, which is needed somewhere else. Now, I know that both of these characters actually have a ultimate skill chain, but it's because Misoha works better with like uh with ice and Sukiomi actually buff lightning team, so they don't actually go really well together. Aside from being very nice to have that ultimate. Aside that, I don't think there's anyone else that's actually nice to have in the team. Uh, Ice is always great. Mis uh, Mitsuha is going to be great. But if you're asking me, should you get Izanami or Mitsuha? Definitely Izanami if you need a uh, Ice DPS. But if you're asking me Hera or Mitsuha, definitely Hera because she's Universal Buzzer. But uh, again, Mitsuha works better as a Ice team. It benefits more for the Ice team rather than Hera being in the Ice team. Uh, Mitsuha has a Pop Rock Outfit Idol skin and it costs 168 of this. Not sure how global works. 
but it doesn't have a lobby skin or anything. It's it does have skill effect chain. I don't think it's something major. I I, I think it's not worth the money. I mean, you can go ahead if you really love Mitsuha. So overall, this is my thought about Mitsuha. She's very swifty, very fun to play, a very great debuff to have for the ice team. Not a must-have because you're gonna be building multiple teams, so not try not to just invest in ice. My name is Zaki here and hopefully you find this video helpful. Make sure to leave some comment in the comment section below what you think, what I got wrong. I will try my best to improve if I got anything wrong because, you know, uh, editing this kind of videos and effect does take time. Aside from that, um, my name is Zach and hey, it's just a gaming channel.